Alright, today's project we are starting because we are getting into February and it is going to be Valentine's Day and this is just a fun project that I like to do here at school and I just thought I would share it with you guys as well. It intertwines a couple famous artists. One is Chris Uphuse who does all these different heart emoji style, um, very poppy colors um, and it's just really great. And the other is Jen Stark who does some wild and crazy paintings. So we kind of mix them both up to create a kind of wild and out there cool emoji. So like I said, Chris Uphughes does these hearts and Jen Stark does these backgrounds. And so we're going to kind of mix them together and create just a cool little groovy, nice, brightly colored project that's perfect for Valentine's Day or perfect just if you like hearts. I like hearts, so it's perfect. All right, you guys, let's All get right, started. So to get started with our Chris Uphughes inspired heart, the first thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper. Regular size piece of paper works just fine. Second thing you're gonna need is a Sharpie or a pencil. It is easiest to draw with a pencil first and then trace with your Sharpie. You guys know I like to just draw with the Sharpie first so that you can see it clearer in my video and <clears throat> um, so that it pops out a little bit more. So what we're going to be doing to start with is, of course, we have to draw our nice big heart. Now, if you want to turn your paper this way, you could also do it that way. Or you can turn it the vertical way, the tall way. I call this the giraffe way, and this is the alligator way because alligators are long and short, and giraffes are tall and skinny. So <clears throat> either way that you decide to do that, we're going to be starting with a nice big size heart. Now, I have a sticky note next to me because I'm going to show you some different techniques for drawing hearts. Yes, you'll often see people go and draw just like that. Sometimes that's really tricky if you're not a very good artist or if you don't really know how to go out like that. So my trick that I teach starting even at kindergarten is to start with your alphabet. So you're going to start with a lowercase letter M. And then you're going to go with the letter V. At the bottom of where your M ends off, you're going to create your V. So you've got your M here and you've got your V there and now you have a heart. Now what you would normally do then is you'd get rid of this little tail up here and <coughs> you can curve this a little bit more so that the edges don't come to a point too. Okay, so let's say I don't draw my little tail. I would go and draw my lowercase letter M and then my V and then I have my heart. Okay. So you guys draw whichever way is easiest for you. I have had lots of practice drawing big hearts the regular way that I've learned other than just the um, letters. So I'm just gonna draw my nice and big. You pick how you wanna draw yours as well. So we're gonna draw a nice big heart in the middle of our paper. Just like so. All right, now this is the start of our heart and we're gonna do it in the style that Chris Uphuse does, which is a lot like emojis. So for our eyes, we're gonna start with almost like a half oval. So you're gonna just make a nice tall half oval. And you're gonna do this on both sides of your heart. All right, now if you ever look in the mirror when you're looking at your eyes, you'll notice the bottom of your eye, your eyelid actually covers a little bit of your eye. So that's the idea that we're kind of giving right here is we're gonna curve a little line that goes past that oval that's gonna be past our eye, but it's gonna almost look like his cheek comes up and uh, kind of blocks a little bit of his eye with his eyelid. All right, then we're gonna do some smaller half ovals inside. Just like so. And then of course we wanna show the little highlight of a light bulb, or not of a light bulb, of a light in an eye. So you're gonna draw a small circle and a tiny circle. Now notice how I did it near the edge of the inner pupil. Okay, so you want it near the edge. You're gonna do the same on the other side. And this one's towards that outer edge as well. Okay, it's gonna look a little funny for a few minutes. If you are currently drawing and have a, you're drawing utensils near you, um, or you're coloring utensils near you, or a Sharpie, if you decide you wanna trace yours with a Sharpie, you can go ahead now and you can color that in. You can pause the video if you need a little extra time, or you can wait until I start doing my coloring and you get the chance to color yours as well. 
So when you color it in, then it looks a lot better. Like, see how this kind of looks weird and wonky? That looks way better once it's colored in because those spots show the reflection in the eye. Now, from here, what you're going to do is you got to kind of decide what type of facial emotion your heart is going to be making. Is it going to be happy? Is it going to be sad? Is it going to be angry? What is it going to be? Or laughing, maybe? That's kind of a fun one, too. Now, Chris Uphughes does a lot where they have kind of their tongue sticking out. Most of his hearts are nice and happy because they're positive hearts and it's for Valentine's Day. And why not be happy, right? So you can kind of decide what you want to do. But from here, if you want yours to be like a girl heart, you can put a couple little lines to make it look like it's got eyelashes. If you don't want a girl heart or you want something else, you can do that as well. For your nose, it's gonna look a little funny because it's gonna look like it's a tiny little face. Doesn't that kind of look like a tiny little mouth? So just kind of a little curved line going down and then back up. And then of course we have our big smile, smile or big face. So if you wanna make a smile, it's pretty easy. Just a nice big U, stretch it out, just like that. Now, it, like I said, in his, what he'll often do too is he'll make the little cheek marks so just little divots on there, just little curved lines. And then he'll also add a tongue, okay? So we're, I'm gonna show you how to add the tongue if you decide that you want to add that. You, of course, like I said, don't have to. So for this, his tongue goes, curves up, and then comes back down. And then there's usually a line in it so that it looks just like a tongue. So it's kind of sticking his tongue out at you. <clears throat> All right, now we're intertwining a little. So I talked about how we're gonna mesh two artist styles together. Another artist is gonna be Jen Stark and she does these cool drip paintings that are kind of like straight out of the 70s where it's a little groovy and kind of psychedelic and all that cool stuff. So she's got these what almost look like paint drips. So behind our heart in our background, we're going to make a Jen Stark style or inspired drip pattern. So how you're gonna do this, I am gonna start with my pencil first so that I can kind of show you too. So for drips, all it is is it's kind of like curved lines going down and coming up and some short and some long. And so you just wanna do some different drip styles. You can kind of see that on mine. I will ultimately be tracing with my Sharpie as well, but I just wanna show you kind of on there. So again, it's like curving up and down. You can also turn your paper if you're a little easier by kind of doing it that way. But you don't want your drips to match every time. So you don't want it like always the same height or the same length. You want it to kind of look like it's longer in some areas and shorter in others. And I'm already changing my whole style that I just did with my pencil too. So that's why I sometimes drawing with pencils good and sometimes we change it up anyways. All right, so now I have my first strip. Now my second one is gonna be mostly behind my heart. So you wanna kinda go with a similar pattern. And I'm just gonna pretend that I'm doing my drips through here, make sure none of it comes out on the other side when I get to the other side of mine. I'll just finish my drip pattern. And then I would start the same, leave some space. So if you notice I'm leaving good chunks of space, you don't wanna do it too, too close, otherwise you'll have a lot to color. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna see just a little bit come behind my heart. Scribbles, whoosh, 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 whoosh. All right, and then you probably can get a good, I'd say a good three to four rows, depending on kind of how big or how separate you do. So it's, like I said, it's kind of like just some wavy type of lines. What we basically want it to look like is that there's paint dripping down behind our heart. All right, so now you are ready to color. Before you get to coloring, one other thing that you can add 
is when paint is dripping and paint is wet, it is shiny. So there is actually a highlight that shows, just like we did the highlight in the eye. There is a highlight that shows in the paint drips. So at the bottom of your drip, so here's gonna be my first color, I see all my paint dripping. At the bottoms, you're gonna draw like a little oval that kind of curves with your drip. And what this does, here I'll trace mine with Sharpie so it's a little more obvious. What this does is then that will stay the color of the paper when you're coloring. And what it's gonna look like then is like those are shiny. And you can do it in some of your small ones too. You don't have to do it in every single drip, but it lets you make that impression that it's shiny and that it's dripping down. Okay, now I wouldn't do it at the top. I'd only do it where the drip is falling. That way it's getting the reflection there. So I can see a little bit behind that. This one only has a little bit because it's a small row. Maybe I'll put one in that small one. Yeah, some of these, if they're too small, they'll fill in like that one just did on mine. So you mainly want to just do it in your big ones. All right. And if you notice, I'm always staying to one side of my drip. So I'm staying to my right side. You can choose your left side, but you want to always stay to the same side. So they're kind of like little ovals or little bean shapes. That's kind of what they remind me of as beans. All right, so now I have some highlight in my drips and in my paint. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fast forward, I'm gonna color mine. I will pop back in at the end and show you how it turned out. And we'll kind of, I'll show you what techniques I also chose to add to mine. So I hope you guys had fun drawing so far and I cannot wait to see how yours comes out for coloring. Have fun. <music> and Jen Stark inspired um, heart with the drip in the background. So it's just kind of a cool graffiti style a little bit there. And like I said, with the adding those little highlights, so doing that, you just leave those white so that it actually looks like, again, it's shiny and it's dripping down the paper behind our heart. As always, you guys, don't forget to sign your artwork because you are an artist and you should always make sure we sign that as well. Make sure that you also share your images with me because I love to see what you guys come up with and how you make it unique to yourselves. So I hope you guys had fun with this project today and we will see you in the next video.